Hello and welcome to Ben Harris. Hi Ben, can you tell us something about yourself? Hello, yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name's Ben Harris. I'm a year six teacher and English lead at Dunmo St Mary's Primary in Essex. Um, I've been teaching for about 20 years now and have always been passionate about the place of reading and writing and English generally in children's lives and in my teaching. And um, I hold stories and uh, books in very high regard in the classroom. So it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to be here today. Thank you. You, you. In your submission for this award, you talk about the joy of reading aloud to your class. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, um, I could talk for England about this. It's something that I think is the centre of what I do with my reading teaching, but also about its place in the child's wider life as well, because the stories that we read um, it's, it's so wonderful to talk to the children about the characters, the actions, uh, the storyline itself, and to, to listen to how they've interpreted it and see how they're taking on board those messages and those characters and those events and, and processing them through their love of story that we do as a shared group. I mean, I've, I've, I think the, the sharing of the story as a community, a reading community in the class, uh, is so important uh, to that, to, to the, the reading aloud of the novel. It's so much more than just me sitting at the front reading, putting on voices or something like that. It's, it's about us really feeling that story as a group. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely passionate about that. I mean, I, I think it's always been part of my practice. Um, and I know that there's a, a couple of people I know who I taught one in, in my very first year of teaching, and they're now teachers themselves. And they, oh, yes. And one of them said um, she always remembered uh, me reading uh, Philip Ridley's Casper in the Glitter uh, to them in, in my first year of teaching. And she said, I just remembered all the voices that you used to do for the, the different characters. And the children obviously do pick up on voices, but I think there's there must be some sort of um, connection that's being made there between the story and the young person um, and the young people in the community. So for me, it's it's absolutely integral to what I do as a teacher, as somebody who's developing young people's characters and minds. And, and how do you choose the books you're gonna share? Is that you or is it shared with the, the class? It's a bit of both. Um, I, what I usually do is I'll, I'll sort of test the water a little bit with the class. And this takes a little bit of time when I'm getting to know a class at the beginning of the mm. year. So I'll, I'll maybe lead it a little bit more at the beginning of the year by finding books that I think they've either worked before with other similar age children. Um, or I'll think, oh, I'm, I'm particularly passionate about that one. And I'd love to share that with the class. And um, and when we when I've got a selection of those books together, um, I'll get, I'll show them the covers, I'll show them the blurbs, and we'll talk about them. Um, I'll say why they'd all be good books to read, um, but ultimately it's up to them. And then we just do a very simple vote. You know, it's vote for your favourite one. Which one do you think you get the most from? Um, having said that, there's been other times where things have come up in the class through general discussion. Um, and I've thought, right, that's something that we need to maybe explore more. And I'll use a book or a story that I know that maybe addresses that or has got a character that's got that sort of, um, is going through that sort of issue in, the, in their lives. Um, but as the year goes on and I get to know the children and the class more, I'm more keen on sort of thinking, right, what are the sorts of stories that they like? Um, and, and then refining my choices to, to give to them to ultimately vote for. Um, it becomes a much more sort of uh, class led thing. I mean, ultimately, I'm, I'm sort of making the, the, the sort yeah. of short. Uh, but they will make the final choice. And there's been actually the 11th trade was one that they chose. Um, and I didn't think it was going to be the one that they were going to pick, actually. But um, it ended up being the uh, the one that uh, that they chose. And for me, actually, it was the book that 
I felt most connected to the children with as well when I was reading it I could see how they were responding in a very different sort of way so that was a lovely surprise and that's happened with Joe Cottrell's Jelly which I wrote about yeah. um, for for uh, the uh, uh, o OU RFP projects and things um, that was another thing that where I felt very connected to the class in uh, by reading that book to them it really seemed to chime with them so it's yeah. wonderful what happens it's everything just gels beautifully had a book you've had to abandon because it didn't gel? Um, I think earlier in my career uh, there were a couple of them and I think that was maybe because as a younger teacher I wasn't as sort of um, I think now that I've been teaching in year six for quite a while I, I've, I've sort of understand that the sort of um, the mindsets and the the needs of those that sort of age of child really well. And I think it can be quite hard when you're coming into a year group for the first time. And and if you're going to go with a novel, um, it, it does take time and you want to pick the right one. So I think that, yes, I think it did happen a couple of times earlier on. Um, I have also read a book where I've said, actually I don't think I'm I'm feeling ready enough um, to read this book with you um, and I read it uh, it was when we were a few years ago we were reading we started reading Pax by Sarah, uh, Sarah yes. Petrucker and um, as I was reading it I had sort of come out of the previous year six class obviously knowing them really well and I thought oh great Pax you know we'll go Ooh. into this and as I started reading it, I thought, I know what's coming. I know the emotional involvement that this book requires. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, you know what, everybody, I've read you for a few days now, but I think I'm going to need to stop because I'm not feeling, I want us to feel comfortable enough to cry together at the end or to, to say things that we're feeling that um, needs us to trust each other. Yeah. And I build that trust with you so that was within the first two days of their year and they were so lovely I remember just looking at them and thinking oh no I'm going to have to stop the book um but um they were they just went absolutely Mr Harris you know we know we understand but they of course know each other really well but we as the teachers don't know them right, and so, right. so we need to build that relationship with them to to, to read the book at, at, at that sort of emotional engagement level I think which is so critical um, well, to do. Let's let's move on then to the eleventh trade because that's another book that has a real emotional punch to it. Definitely. Um, but just to um, recap, you didn't choose this as part of your ongoing curriculum. It wasn't central to a no. project. It was just the book you chose to read aloud. Tell us a bit about yeah. that. It was uh, so they they chose it. Um, uh, from a, a group of three or four and um, of course I started reading it and enjoying the story with them and then obviously uh, at the very beginning of the book uh, you get you you get Sammy and he's obviously holding something back he's holding back his real story and I remember at the same time you've got this other sort of um, level of the book where you're seeing the surface side of Sammy. You're seeing how he's doing these trades because he wants to get the rebab back for Baba. And, um, and the children immediately uh, pounced on that bit. I, I remember them really becoming very um, intensely interested in he started only with a Manchester United keychain. You know, how's he going to get seven hundred and fifty dollars or whatever it is? You know, and um, and they were absolutely. And I and I, what I love about the book is that I think Alyssa Hollingshurst, um, uh, Hollingworth, uh, takes that aspect which children can really relate to that idea of trading and mm. and doing those things, and. Um, and then she weaves in this sort of more difficult level of what Sammy has been through, which um, many children, I mean, all the children that I've read, you know, haven't experienced that sort of thing. And so they were able to click into Sammy's character because they appreciated what he was trying to do. Um, but then as they obviously started to realize there was much more to Sammy than than just getting an wow. instrument for his grandfather um that they um 
that they clicked in with that. And then, so it was this beautiful sort of gelling of, of the outer Sammy and the inner Sammy that I felt yes. that, we, that that started to develop as we got further and further into the book. So it was lovely. And I mean, I, I really feel so strongly about this, but when, when, when I think about PSHE lessons in class or when you're talking about social development of children and emotional development of children, I just feel so passionately that books do that without a formal lesson and naturally. they do it so, yes and they just do it naturally and so much more real because I could see the children really starting to feel what Sammy was feeling to a certain extent even though all that they could have in common with him was well I've traded some trading cards before or I know what it feels like to try and get a bit of money yeah. for something I really want so it was a beautiful way of connecting a very tricky concept for children to their lives uh, today so it was it was wonderful to do that but that's that's where it fits into the curriculum for me I sort of feel quite justified in doing it because I because I it's developing the SAG you know as well as the reading for enjoyment you know it's lovely it's great well we've run out of time I'm afraid I'm just going to refer to the beautiful display that's behind you which yes. is uh, the children's work on this book and, and they yes. decided how they wanted that to go didn't they they yeah, they did. Yes, they did. I, I mean, there were actually so many. Op I, I said to them, we're going to enter this competition. What sort of things would you like to do around the book after we'd read it? And they said, oh, we could make models. They wanted to make um, some of them wanted to make fabric ones, like little soft toy versions of all the trades as well. Um, they said, we'd like to learn about cookery because where, because iftar is mentioned a lot yes. through the text. And they said, what, what is that? You know, and what, 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 can, what foods do they have at, for iftar and, and things like that? So we researched all of that and did a bit of cooking um, and their writing as well, which, um, uh, which we submitted. That was very very emotionally involved I think because again they were given that choice and I said to them what would you what's grabbed you and so we've got you know uh, entries from a, a gaming magazine which Sammy yes. Trey all the way up to some pretty heartbreaking you know um, emotional responses to the wedding um, it, towards the end of the book so it was wonderful to give the children that that openness and also when I saw them coming back in I could see Look what a book has done. It's it's opened up a story to 31 children here, but each one of them has taken something different to connect with. And, and that for me was, was quite humbling as their teacher. We're going to stop there. What a wonderful place to stop. Thank you so much for your time. It's Absolute pleasure. Thank you, Christine. Okay.